Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. It's Friday the 19th of May and I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. In a week when the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, publishes its assessment about a higher level of global heat in the next five years, we hear from Canadian warning preparedness meteorologist about the crippling heat that has sparked wildfires across Western Canada. First of all, let's just pick up on the flooding, which has really impacted some parts of Italy. It was named by the Italian Met Service earlier this week as Storm Minerva. And Alex, you know, if you look at the the charts from earlier this week, you can see it's a real beast developing just off the coast of North Africa, possibly explosive cyclogenesis. I don't know whether that was confirmed or not, but certainly a real threat to uh, the risk of intense winds and, and heavy rain as it tracked northeastwards. And so obviously there was a lot of warning that this storm was tracking across Italy towards the Adriatic. Uh, and because of that, big events have been, were cancelled, weren't they? Yes, there's been some serious flooding, some tragic events across Italy. Of course, that storm system, like you say, really intensified that explosive cyclogenesis, just really popping out the isobar. So as well as the heavy rain, there's some strong winds as well as that storm system moved across Sicily and then across the main part of Italy. And it's not just been Italy been affected either. Croatia has also been affected. Uh, Formula One. Huge event supposed to be taking place this weekend at uh, Imola. Um, the Grand Prix has had to be cancelled. And of course, we've seen the, the deadly impacts with uh, as estimated uh, nine people so far have been killed, but several, several missing from the flooding uh, across northern Italy, particularly in that uh, uh, Emilia Romagna region. Yes, the mayor of Ravenna has said that his city is now unrecognisable with 14 rivers bursting their banks flooding 23 towns. I can't imagine the devastation and how many people have been displaced because of just one storm. But that's not the end of the story. No, it's not. A bit of a lull at the moment, Thursday, Friday. The weather is getting a little bit dry, but there is another one, another low coming in from a slightly different angle. But it's going to hit Italy again during the course of the weekend. Further spells of wet and windy weather. Now, some reports we've seen already 400 millimetres of rain from Storm Minerva and this next bout of rainfall likely to bring a further 80 to 150 millimetres in places with perhaps some spots seeing another 300 millimetres of rain, particularly obviously over the hills. Um, it'll be falling as snow over the mountains of about 2,000 metres, strong and gusty winds as well. Again, another, another factor. And again, it won't just be Italy affected. The Balkans will continue to see further heavy rain where we have seen flooding. So yes, a bit of a respite at the moment but further wet weather to come this weekend it's just it's really hard to visualize how bad it has been and possibly could be again so yes some more impacts in the way across this region the thing is um, Alex with climate with climate change is that we talk about these situations and the frequency and the fact that they are they are becoming more and more frequent and more intense you know, this bad weather is in the headlines every single week now, whether it's Italy, whether it's America, whether it's Australia, no one is immune. No, we are saying that's to be expected. And that's completely what scientists at the Met Office have been have been forecasting. You know, extremes of weather are going to become more frequent. Often there's a report about the latest climate change. We've had one this week, a really big one this week. Uh, the Met Office produced a report for the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, about 1.5 degrees Celsius. We've talked a lot about that. It's such a key figure when we're talking about climate change. And it's a pretty stark headline coming out of this report. It centers on the very high likelihood that the world will breach that climate threshold. We are expected to hit that 1.5 degrees Celsius. There's a very good chance that we will even in the next five years. Keeping uh, below 1.5 degrees Celsius relative, of course, to the average temperatures back from 1850 to, to 1900 has been a big aspiration uh, since, you know, Paris. That was the big one, wasn't it? 2015 mm, since yeah. the COP at Paris. So that's that's why we talk about 1.5 all the time. But pretty serious stuff. And that, you know, that number 1.5, what does it really mean? It's um, the increase above a certain average level across the whole world. And it's an average over a year. So, you know, this actually brings in the North South Pole, the South Pole, what's happening across the deserts, the oceans, etc. And if you think about it, the level from 
where we are at now to where we were during the last glacier or the last, last ice age is only six degrees or so. So, you know, that's the, the amount of heat that it takes. If you lose that amount of heat, you're going back into an ice age. So we're going in the, the other direction, 1.5, an injection of 1.5 degrees. We've already seen what's happening across the globe and we don't want any more warming. And that's why we keep trying to keep it below 1.5, that sort of that, that threshold. And it's the road to net zero. It really is. But what does this report say? What it says that there's a 98 percent chance that one year in the next five years will be the warmest on record. And there's a two in three chance that globally that temperature will exceed the, the threshold of 1.5 above pre-industrial levels. 98 percent chance i mean that's pretty much as high as it's going to go for any scientist isn't it i mean that that's, is absolute certainty really if you think that's about for breaking it. the current record though that's not yeah breaking the current record and 66 percent for the 1.5 thank you for pointing that out i don't want to be getting in into trouble with the hadley center <laughs> this afternoon um so yes obviously why is that happening why do scientists think that that will occur well there's one key thing apart from obviously we we're just pumping out carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and we continue to do so. And that's that big thing that happens across the South Pacific. Yeah, so there's hmm. two fundamentals behind this report, isn't it? Obviously, human-induced climate change is causing the globe to warm. We know that. But what's likely to happen this year as well to contribute to that is El Nino. So for the past three years, we've had this triple dip, La Nina, which is the opposite of El Nino, and that's helped to actually cool the planet or keep keep the planet lower in terms of absolute temperature than than it would have been but we're going into what's very likely to be an el nino year and that raises the temperature so that combination of el nino plus this background continual rise due to human induced climate change that's those those double whammies likely to lead to this exceedance Arctic heating is that's where we're likely to see the highest temperatures it's expected that the arctic we know that the arctic is bearing the brunt already uh, but the Arctic heating is predicted to be more than three times higher than the global average. So it is going to be this regional bias that we see again. The Arctic is going to warm up and that is going to have uh, potentially very serious uh, consequences. This report does not mean that we will permanently exceed the 1.5 degree Celsius level specified in the Paris Agreement. However, the WMO really sounding the alarm with this report that we will breach that 1.5 Celsius level, at least on a temporary basis, with increasing frequency uh, in the years ahead. Yeah, so my goodness. And so that's the latest report written by the Met Office for the WMO. And this week, extreme weather is in the headlines from central Mediterranean across to the northwest of America. And this is another heat wave story. And we hear about these all the time. And in fact, Armel Castellan, who I spoke to earlier, he's what we call a warning preparedness meteorologist for the Environment and Climate Change Canada. And he spoke to us on mostly climate just last year, talking about the deadly summer of 2021, when Lytton in British Columbia, just a small town, saw a temperature of 49.5 degrees Celsius. So that's almost 50 degrees Celsius. And if you look at the latitude of Lytton, it's just slightly further south of the Isle of Wight. So it has the same solar radiation equivalent to the UK. Even so, the town saw a temperature of 49.5 degrees Celsius, and the next day it burnt to the ground. So harrowing events, and in this situation, which we're just about to hear the conversation, Lytton yet again sparks a peak in temperature at 36.5 degrees Celsius. And that's mid-May. So here's Amal talking to me about the latest situation of the heat wave across Northwest America. For mid-May, you know, temperatures should only be in the teens, whether you're in northern BC or southern BC. I mean, it's, it's very rare to hit uh, temperatures into, you know, the, the mid 20s would be an extraordinary strong mid May type of temperature. And we're, you know, 15 degrees above our normals and meaning that some places uh, were getting into the upper 20s uh, when they should have been in the teens. Others cresting well above 30 degrees. Just yesterday, our most infamous example hotspot in, in Canada, 36.5 degrees. So easily warmest May day in Canadian history. Hyperbole can't 
describe uh, how anomalous this event is. I've noticed in the news there's been many headlines about the heat across Canada, but also about wildfires. The air quality element is so strong because smoke obviously knows no boundaries, no borders. It travels so quickly uh, through some of the highway of the atmosphere. You know, a, a couple days after the fire started in Alberta, the province next to BC, where they're largely uh, located, the smoke was arriving to Toronto on the other side of the country and luckily wasn't descending to the surface, so it wasn't choking them out, but they the, making headlines there for the orange sunrises and sunsets. Uh, since then, it's gotten much worse. The, some of the locations from interior BC into uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan are in values that mimic what we saw in 2017, 2018, and 2021. Those fires we're bringing concentrations of particulate, fine particulate that goes deep into your lungs, uh, upwards of several hundred micrograms per cubic meter. We only need 25 micrograms per cubic meter to be in a very unhealthy environment. So we're multiple fold above those concentrations. It's when the street lights start coming on in the middle of the day in some locations because it's so dark that uh, the, because of the smoke and the sun's rays not being able to get down to the surface that we are um, experiencing that across many parts of Western Canada at this point. Uh, thanks to uh, Armel Castellan there. Um, obviously the weather in the UK significantly less extreme than it is in Italy or Canada. Thankfully, we've got high pressure nearby. And actually for the past week or so, we've had a mixture of some heavy downpours, but also some sunshine. Here's Ollie Claydon with last week's highs and lows. Here are your UK weather extremes for week beginning Monday the 8th of May. The highest recorded temperature was 21.6 degrees Celsius, which occurred at Helens Bay, Northern Ireland on Monday, and at Kew Gardens, London on Sunday the 14th. The coldest place of the week was Dalwini in the Scottish Highlands, which saw temperatures drop to minus 0.4 degrees on Thursday. The wettest place was Usk in Monmouthshire, Wales, where 43 millimetres of rain was recorded on Tuesday. The sunniest place in the UK last week was Bulmer, which enjoyed 14.8 hours of sunshine on Thursday. Thanks very much to Ollie Claydon. Alex Deacon, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you very much to everyone else for listening to this podcast. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Another great weather snap, Claire. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Then you catch all of our daily weathers on YouTube as well. And if podcasts are your thing, check out our Met Office podcast channel. Lots of information, lots of stories there. And we'll see you again next week.